called Drummond. Yeah. And and can you can you go back to say your earliest memories of playing? Uh, who who would have been your influences? Uh, who would you have grown up here? Who made you want to play? I suppose. Well, <coughs> my mother played. Yeah. She played the accordion, and all my brothers played. We were six six in family, and there was no electricity in this house we lived in at those this time back in the the fifties, forties. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And uh, at night, everybody would take the accordion, go up in the room, Jesus. and play. Wow. Uh, and you all had your own accordion, I think. No, so. no, there was oh. only the one accordion. You be joking. What's the one? And they won accordion probably in the village. Wow, right, right. <laughs> so um, you all played in the house then? All the brothers played? We did, yes. Uh, all the brothers played. But we got it from my mother. Right. And she played until she was. Nearly a hundred. Jeez, that's amazing. She died a month short of a hundred. Wow. And she was playing her little accordion right up to the end. Lovely. Unreal. Lovely portraits and yeah. slides and everything. That time there was no such thing as tape recorders or nothing like that. The uh, music was passed. Uh, there'd be house dances. And an awful lot of people in the village would play the accordion. The accordion was sort of the uh, instrument in our mm. village, our area. And the accordion would be passed along from one to the other. To, throughout the village? To, well, no, throughout, throughout, the throughout the house at yeah, night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, each one would play, and again, it was many sets they were dancing. Mm-hmm. Half sets mm-hmm. in the front of the, at the front of the fire, the flag, flag, flag floor. Yeah, yeah. So, so music was really, uh, it was connected very strongly with dancing. Like the, the, it was, it was. was the reason they played. Yeah, they played it was. Dancing, yeah. It was dance, dance music, dance yeah. Music, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, so, and and your your, your mother's people, like they, they, she came from that village, or is she from uh, a village further on, called okay. Danny Moore. Right. Yeah. And like her family, would you have uncles or aunts that would have played, or was there any kind of other members of her family that would have played? Uh, funny enough, not that I know of. Mm. Uh, a lot of them went to America, mm. but I never heard them. Of anyone else in the family playing mm. that I knew of, anyways. All right, right. And 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 your brothers and stuff like that. Did they would they have continued playing as they were kind of growing up in their teens, like yourself? Like would they have continued uh, playing? Or? Yeah, one especially Joe, my brother. He played with me on the band for a while. Right. And he loved playing. He really, poor man got a stroke and he couldn't play in the line oh. and it broke his heart. Okay, it broke his heart. Yeah. Mm. So music was very important to. It was in our house. In, yeah, in yeah, the house. Yeah. Okay. So yourself, you started very young, I take it, and it was, it was a very common thing in your house to play music. It you was. surrounded by it all the time, I take it. Yes, yeah. and then there was a little dance hall. Mm. Uh, they had sort of graduated from the, the house dances mm. to the dance halls. An old school would be kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was one of them near us at home. And I used to play myself and another fella. He was a drummer. We used to play there for the dances. It started off that like that. And why do you think that have uh, that would have evolved that way? That it would have left the house dancing and gone into this bigger room? Is it because there was more interest in it, or less people interested to have everyone over well, the house? Well, in, in the house dance, you could only fit in a half set. Okay. Whereas in the, in, in the yeah. big theatre, you, you could fit in many many okay. sets. But the dance sets and quick steps and waltzes and fast steps, you know, yeah. that was the dances for the night. Right. As they're still at that. And they're still at it. Yeah, yeah. And and so you'd have kind of can, can can you remember like the first time you kind of went out playing then like so you 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 grew up in Drummond you you went to school was there music in the school for instance the school you went to not really no no no, no this is the first place I went out publicly in this little dance hall this right. whole school okay uh, what age would you have been I'd have been only about fifteen I suppose oh, fourteen right. or fifteen yeah yeah yeah. Uh, and then my brother Joe played with me there as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We used to play there once a week, sort of thing. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And then it sort of grew from that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were asked to play in another hall, and we added a couple more to the band. Like, fantastic. Uh, there was no such thing as guitar at that time, but in a year or two after that, 
uh, guitars started to get popular. Mm -hmm. And there was a fellow who was in England, Fonsi Cannon, and he came home and he could play the guitar. And I got him to go on the band with us. Oh, well, that was big time now. Band was like, you know, yeah. a guitar on the band, my yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't every band that had a guitar player. Oh, no, 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 no. And what year would this have been? So the start of the band? That'd be about, that's the late 50s. Okay. Late fifties it yeah. started. The band, the band lasted for twenty-seven years, from nineteen fifty-seven and twenty-seven, bring twenty-seven forward. Uh, it lasted that length. Yeah. We were in uh, the era of the show bands, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a fifteen-year uh, time, fifteen over fifteen years. There was about 500 show bands in Ireland. Full time. There were some of them full time. We weren't full time now. 500? 500, yeah. Oh, yeah. And earning great money. Like all the big ballrooms yeah. were built during that time as well. All the big bands grew up. And we were a small little band. Four piece and five piece. And we'd done all the local halls. So it was dancing. About five, nearly every night of the week that time, because there was no such thing as television or radio or nothing. Back in the 50s, the late 50s, uh, all of them started to come in gradually, you know. So, so because of, like, nowadays it's hard to imagine a time without even even radio or in a house or a television in a house, but then there was none of that. So the, their only social outlet and entertainment was, was, was the dance hall. The dance hall. Yes. And would there be a... a a performance every night or every couple of nights in the week? There'd be, dancing, be a dance somewhere every night of the week wow. you want to go to. Wow. Maybe not Monday night, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and the, the men went to the pub. There was no... Women never went to the pub that time. They went dancing. And in the early part of the night, the women would come in and they'd all dance with each other. And then the men would come in at about 11 o'clock. And... The dance went on until one o'clock, and we'd be playing for maybe four hours. And it was all kind of fox trots and waltzes. Well, and then yeah, and stuff there'd like be Siege of Venus oh, and then a couple of sets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all these were mixed in. Okay. in the, and, and do you find that even when you look back, was there as much of an interest in, we say, the traditional sets? Because I, I could imagine jives and fox trots and waltzes were always very popular among dancers. But was there an equal amount of interest among people for? Set dancing, for instance, uh, like, like uh, the Siege of Venice or, or yeah, the Walls. Yeah, there was, but it wasn't very well done in our area now. Mm. Like Claire would have yeah. would properly done. Like, as regards to sets and things mm. like that, there was one set that used to be danced all the time in all the different areas. Mm. Uh, the Dorada set mm. now is, is, is resembled it. Mm. But uh, the dance of Siege of Venice then, and it was mm. the dance and swing until it fell on the ground. And, <laughs> You know, it wasn't yeah. very well structured. No, 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 no. Not so, until right. the wave of set dancing came on and mm. teachers came and taught her properly, you know. Okay, okay. And, and where do you think these people in, we say, Drummond or these areas, where would they have been learnt or, or taught to dance, do you think? Like, uh, because, as you said, this was before the time of structured uh, teaching and, 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 and kind of being told kind of how to dance properly. Like, yeah. Well, these people just have picked it up off their... Well, this particular set, it was it was an easy set to learn. Mm. And that was danced all the time. But only in half and four people dances. Whereas full set is eight, like, you know. Mm. And they'd only danced half set because there was only room for them. Mm. They were dancing on flagged floors in these old thatched houses at the time. Mm. And uh, that's that was the main dance... There would probably be walls, I'd say, that danced as well. Be very common, I'd say. But that was a little before my time. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then the band took off. You were playing, you had the guitar player, so you were flying it. We were you were flying it, yes. Yeah. yeah and, and you were set up as a dance band. What was the name of the band? Uh, well, it started off... <laughs> I'd love to tell you the story. Oh, right, please do. Uh, as I said, we were playing in this hall, Carrie Kennedy Hall, and then we were invited to play in a hall called Mullach. It was back near Lewisburg. And uh, 
we had no name the, on the band, you know. So I know if we went and played, and of course it was a road of success, everyone came, this famous band had come to town. And uh, then the guy that was one of the hall uh, wanted us back the following Sunday night again. And he, he says, will you, will you come back again next Sunday night? And I said, we will, yeah. What do you call yourselves? <laughs> we had no name. Right? So <laughs> he stood up and he announced, the Kirkpatrick Orchestra will be back here next week again. <laughs> Orchestra. <laughs> Orchestra. And that's how the, the name came. The Kirkpatrick Orchestra. We were called then the Kirkpatrick Trio. Because there was three of them, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, <laughs> went to the quartet, and this was going for a good few years. So, anyways, we didn't think it was swanky enough for whatever. <laughs> so it was changed to the Pat Friel group. Very good. For tax reasons. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, oh, there was different changes down the years. Yeah, 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 yeah. To Frankie and the Friel men. Right. We had Frank McCaffrey come on the band singing, he was a great singer. And it was known as Frankie and the Freelman. Because yeah. at this stage we had branched out up Galway, Druscom, and everywhere. You're you know. playing all over the place. Playing, that time there was Marquise. Yeah. Galway was noted for Marquise uh, from Easter onwards. We'd be playing in them. And there'd be up to maybe 2,000 people in these Marquises. It was unbelievable. Oh, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so, but, but the whole of the band stayed the same yourself, your brother. Frankie on the guitar? Ah, uh, was, yeah. Or had well, you no, there was different uh, people, as I said, it was going for 27 years, so uh, there was different people coming and going. Really, the show band was really, it started off not necessarily to play the charts of the time, because when people think of show bands, they think of uh, Brendan Boyer or, 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 oh, yeah. or you know, the, 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 all no, these big the, show bands, but when you started off, you started off actually playing traditional type music. Oh, that's what we were playing, yeah. reels and jigs, yeah. Reels and jigs. Yeah. And then we were asked to play in the, in the dance hall, mm -hmm. uh, where they would want to dance an old time waltz mm -hmm. and quick steps and foxtrots. So we sort of got a program to learn to look at them and uh, put them together and added them to the kid. And so it's basically it's 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 demand. It's 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 yeah. basically people are asking you, do you know this one? And you had to have it offered the next week, kind of thing. Yeah, well, it's just to make up the program, anyways. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there was no such thing as guitars or anything in, 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 when we started. Mm. There was no guitars and so, so, in so what was in the band then? It was two accordions and two accordions and drums. Right. And um, that was it. Uh, they say later there was a guitar added to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a big excitement. That was a big excitement. It was just rock and roll. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and it's funny, over a five year period or less than that, uh, the guitars took off for in every every band then. Three guitars, drums, bass and piano. And that was the that was the That was the show band. The show band then, yeah, yeah. They added brass to it, of course, trumpet and sax. Yeah, 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 brilliant, yeah. Mm. And and do you think that was kind of like, like during that time, do you remember kind of any crossovers with KD bands at the time? Would there be many people still trying to hold on to the, Because you, you're, you're talking about the 50s, so maybe 20 years before that, you had the great era of the 1920s and 30s and late 30s of the music coming over from America. So there would have been an interest in them, in them old recordings and, and in, in playing traditional music. When you started with a show band, you started as a traditional musician. Would you have bumped into other bands doing the same thing, playing, really starting off as traditional musicians, but having to go with the times? Uh, well, uh, there was one or two bands. Uh, I think Bros Welsh, he would have started as, he played the accordion himself. Right. Started from an accordion player okay. and branched out yeah. sort of thing, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, well, as an accordion player playing the couple of walls, a couple of rings and Yes, yes. Okay, so really traditional bass. And, and then took it off from Yeah. Okay. Even last night Michael English was on television and he was talking about that, that a lot of the bands, show bands, started from KD bands. Yeah, yeah. And he was making the comparison with uh, Philomena Begley. Yeah. She was asked as a young girl to play in a, sing in a, uh, a, um, a Kayleigh band, the old cross Kayleigh band. 
and it branched out from that into... And that was her introduction to... That was her own introduction. Show yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's important, it's there, like, I mean, because the, 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 these hits or these charts, where were people hearing these? Were they coming off well, the then record? That was, that was the British. That the started... The, the, when the Beatles, the Beatles sort of kicked off mm. the popular music, pop music, mm. and the Beatles and the Rolling Stones, mm. they were the two first influences. And again, like that, loads of groups started up after them, and them uh, started a weekly chart. The BBC did uh, playing these popular bands, and who would be up on the top. And we were talking later, later about records and all that. Who sold the most records, and how you got into the charts? Yeah, and yeah, the stories. Were yeah, that's how that started. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And uh, they would be playing the popular music of the, the time. Mm -hmm. So radio stations you're talking about then? How important are they? The radio stations. Yeah, yeah. Like they, they would have been playing these hits from England and America, for instance. No, it was all big band and okay big stuff. You wouldn't hear it. They had to start a um, pirates. Pirate station. The pirate station. Okay. The ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out in the. In the yeah, yeah. The I heard of that one. Yeah. That's how that started okay. to play pop music. Okay. Because the the, the BBC so RT wouldn't play it. So what what were the radio stations playing at that time then? What, big yeah. big band stuff. Okay. Uh, Joe Lawson. Mm -hmm. uh, there were a lot of big bands being played, and that was the music. That was the, the, the music. And that was the, the dance bands was at, at that time. They had uh, brass I know, mm. trumpet, trombone, sax, and piano, and double bass, and drums, and a singer out front. Mm. That was how the band, and they all sat down. And uh, the, show, the Royal Show Band, Clipper Carrollton was another band that started all they stood up, they threw, off, threw away the chairs, stood up and started playing and singing, and they called them uh, show bands. They started it all off. So it, it was just a change in, 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 in perspective, or a change yes. in how they looked at things, and yeah. maybe more modern, more youthful kind oh, of way yes, of playing. Oh yes, that's yeah, right, yeah. 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 Well, well, great times. Yeah, great. It sounds like, especially in the times we're in now, which is something we'll talk about later, is with this COVID business and how we're kind of... Yeah. <clears throat> for instance, the two of us play and play in the very pub we're in at the moment, Matt Malloy's. You've played here for nearly since the doors opened. 30 years. 30 years yeah. in the one corner. And we're sitting in the same pub today where there hasn't been music here in nearly seven months. No. And that's a strange time, in, even in Irish history. Like, I, I can't. The stories you're telling of 2,000 people in a marquee back in the 60s, as opposed to today where we're. We can't even go into a pub and play. Yeah. And with our modern times and all that. So yeah. it's kind of very, very weird how things have changed that much. Um, but yeah. as regards the, the traditional music then, uh, that, that didn't come until later. Mm. Uh, there was always traditional players around, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good flute players and everything yeah. like that. But, but, but for yourself, we'd say, so you're busy with the show band thing, this was booming. Kind of what period did you see a change in this? Because we know that the show band scene kind of dipped a small bit as oh, well. It did. It, what happened then to the show bands, they were, uh, all of the bands were playing in those old halls, like, and there were no heating or nothing in them. And they were for, for, in winter they were uh, oh, yeah. cold, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, somebody started to play records in a pub, you know, and it, they called it a fancy name, the discotheque. Now where they got it, foreign name. And the discotheque anyways, sort of quenched the, band, the show oh, band. Okay, that, that, yeah. was the, that was the death of the show band. That was the death yeah, of the show oh, band. Kind of electric music kind of yes, records. Yes, they improved on, on the disco, the disco then it was called. And, um, um, what year would that have been, like roughly? What kind of period of time? Seventies. That brought us up to the seventies, I think. Okay, so that was a yeah. Uh, so, 
And then the band, like, so, so the, the Freedmen, well, whatever it was called at the time, when did... These 500 bands were nearly all gone off the road. Uh, over uh, probably less than a five year period, you know, wow. because the discos caught on quick because the, the, the girls, at this stage, the girls were going into the pubs as well. And they didn't want to go to an old cold hall, couldn't get a drink or nothing. And the discos took over right. yeah. and quenched the bands wow. in a short period of time, like, you know. So it's basically demand of circumstance, like, like yeah. didn't want to go into the cold halls. There's nice music down in this pub where there's heat and I can have yeah. a drink. So, yeah, okay. And the fellow that was running the disco, he didn't have to pay a band. He just played records. Mm. So he had the records, he bought the records. Well, yes, so but they improved like well. Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. Big sound. Like. And, 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 but why, why do you think the, the, the dance hall wouldn't have done anything about that if they saw... Well, I don't know, they, they, uh, they slipped up badly because... Well, would it be safe to say that it was run by the kind of... the religion, or to say that was the, was the religion involved there, do you think? You know no, the story? The religion, no, they had squeezed out the religion. They were really religious in 1935. They brought in the dance hall acts. Uh, they have to have a license to run a, a, right. a dance. Yeah. But they had more or less been squeezed out of it. It was big promoters would uh, come in. Like they'd be getting up to 2,000 people, nearly 3,000 people sometimes in these halls. There was a, a hall in the, the Royal Ball in the Castle Bear. If you didn't put in 2,700, your band wouldn't be in the next wow. week. You had to bring in the crowds. Big Tom and all these bands like could bring them crowds, sort of crowds. There was only a handful, maybe ten bands would bring that sort of crowds, you know. So the local bands and the smaller show bands wouldn't have a look in at them venues, right? Well, we would. Go for we would. We just hold the coattails. Yeah. By they would they uh, arrived at the time where they wouldn't be playing dances was four hours, like, you know. And they'd get a relief band okay. to play the first two hours. And sport we'd, act kind of Sport thing. act, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, we'd get in a bit that way. No, they wouldn't kill you with money, like, you no. know. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a bit of promotion for oh, the band. No, no, of course, it's what you'd be told we from yeah, promoters. Right. It's great for you, you're playing on a big stage. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you're talking mid-70s, the show bands, all these 500 bands were weaseled down to Maybe a oh, handful, handful yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, what did you do yourself for, for music, or were you still... Did, was there such a thing as a transition from show band music to traditional music, for instance? There was. In the 80s, uh, traditional music started to become more popular. Uh, it has, that, you could say it was sort of cool to play then. Before that, I started off playing the accordion on the band and over the years the accordion had to be hid away and not to be seen to be playing bog music. Uh, we used to play, as I say, for Siege of Innocence and everything, but maybe over the, the last 10 years of the band that wasn't done at all. Uh, it wasn't cool to play that sort of music. So uh, I went on playing guitar then. Right. Play bass guitar okay. Okay. and drummer. Yeah. So you're a man of many <laughs> talents. Very That's good. Love, love. So, so there was no need for the accordion. So then it kind of became guitar. So, so then the Irish music started to get popular. Cortes mm. brought music to the fore, like you know. Uh, I myself was instrumental in starting the local branch of Cortes in town here, myself and another fellow. And we started, set dancing came on at the same time. There was set dancing uh, teachers brought in to set, to teach the dancing. And that took off big time, you know, all of a sudden as well. Because I can imagine it being a very different thing for, for the public, for sort of the people that were going to the sh the, the, these um, show band performances with Jive and Foxer. And then all of a sudden, maybe some of the same people might be going off learning how to do the clear sets or, or polka sets. Well, like, there was a transition, like the, these people would be 
married in, in their 50s and uh, their families reared. And set dancing came on then, and it was an outlet for them. They went to uh, learn set dancing from the teachers. And it, so it was more of a social outlet? Social outlet, Okay, right? yeah, just a, a chance to get Oh, yes, to yes. Mingle kind of thing. And uh, it took off in a big way. Now that's, it's gone now well for 30 years, set dancing. Quite strong. And it has and a bit of a wean on it at the moment. Mm. Because the younger ones now have gone into social dancing, mm. which was it's, it's social kind dancing is only to, the same thing back again to, to, back to the quick city. steps and yeah, fast yeah, yeah. steps. Back to the show band, yeah. yeah. So, like, would you see it as kind of coming in waves or circles? Like, I mean, it's kind of gone around the full. It's yeah, kind of 180 now again, like from as you said, what thirty years of traditional arts would be being popular set dancing and stuff, and now young people, as you as you're right. Are more into kind of jives and fast Yeah, and a lot of them, a lot of them, like the, the 50s age group. Yeah. And the set dancing group have got old and they're not fit to do it they're anymore. Not fit to do it anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a program called Kyol to Chira, Kier Makmahuna, on RTE on a Sunday for a half an hour. And we. The tape recorder then was, come on, big reel to reel job. Mm. And of course, we had no electricity to drive it. We used to have a 12 volt battery, or to the care to drive it. <laughs> and you'd record. I know the first ones was the Yellow Tinker and the Sally Gardens, were the first sort of modern shows, as we'd call them at the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Miss McLeod would be there, and Bunny Kate and all them. Yeah, yeah. But these were sort of the modern ones that, yeah, we, yeah. that we heard for the first time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but would you have heard anything about, we say, the Coleman's and Morrison's as they were going up to jail? Not that much, no. really. No, not no. that much. So, so your mother, your mother was just playing tunes that she heard in her locality. Right? Yes, and they were just uh, heard between each other, and bits of it got in the brain, and maybe you get another bit the next night and. Mm -hmm. Polkas and slides, she was great at them for the dancing. And Reed, Miss McLeod, she yeah, 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 yeah. was the favourite. Uh, yeah. so, so then these modern tunes, as you call them, came out, and who would you first, who, who would be playing these tunes then? Because it wouldn't be the, 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 the 78 era was kind of well No, it was young. Paddy O'Brien was so our, Paddy, our yeah. god, yeah, yeah. and uh, Kieran Kelly, yeah, yeah. Uh, James Ross, uh, it was these. Players started to come on stream, like you know, mm -hmm. and their music we were imitating. Yeah, yeah. We were still imitating me, I am, and Paddy O'Brien. Yeah, 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 yeah of course. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But but also keeping a great reverence to your mother, and, and the, oh, yes. the liveliness of her playing the songs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very yeah. hearty player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. I have tapes of her in the house. Really? Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jeez. You came from good stock, so. Oh, yeah. Well, I, 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 uh, to, to Horner last week, we took the music from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And on your father's side, would there, uh, would there be any kind of? Not really. No, no he, he. I don't think he was a singer really. No. It was, my mother was, was all her, yeah. Song right through. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And I wonder to think back, what was their idea of of what was their the day of the house dances, of course, so they wouldn't have known anything about. The, the, the dance halls and stuff like that. That would have been well after her time, I take it. Uh, it would. Um, ah, yeah. So, so she house dancing at that time. Mm. And just be in their own villages, like, yeah, you know, yeah. they wouldn't be tra traveling fair no, at all. No, no. Uh, so they kept to In, in a lifetime, they barely, you know, might be in Westport. Really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Only in the later years. Amazing. It is amazing to think that even in a village that wouldn't be. 10 or 15 miles away from Westport. People wouldn't have been in Westport a handful of times in their life. A handful of times, yeah. You see those, you'd have to walk, you'd have to, yeah, yeah, the yeah, bicycle yeah. wasn't even invented right. at that time, it was only stopping coming in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard to believe it. It is very hard to believe. How fair we've come oh, in life. Oh, yeah, yeah. But also how, how much we can learn from these people as well, because we've come very far, but at the same time, we don't have a lot to show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes as well, so it's great to I know, like it's, it's a, uh, not that in my lifetime, uh, everything is, 
part of the revive or you know what we're going into now. So one year, uh, last year stuff is is, is all hat now. Oh, it is, yeah, with yeah, yeah. Technology, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going very fast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What do you think would have helped? We'd say the, the, the longevity of the 30 years of interest in traditional music and dances, is it because of them people? Or, or if you were to name something that you think would have helped us or fueled us? Oh, I think Cortes and Cortes, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Flaz mm. and River Dance mm. gave it a great boost because, yeah, yeah. you know, people. Um, Irish dancing was done in a different way. Mm. And yeah, I think it was still going. Like, River dances toured in the world all the time, mm-hmm. and that uh, gave a, a boost mm-hmm. to the Irish music as well. A culture, in general. Culture, yeah, 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 because yeah. So, so, but, but you think it it was more attainable for people? In other words, they seen it on the telly. So. Oh yes, it became it became some cool, special, cool. Yes, it became so cool much, to yeah, play yeah. it and to listen to it, and as the kids was growing up. They were all going learning Irish music. As they are, yeah. Shops, as is tonight, yeah. yeah, going to teachers, and there's some wonderful players mm. of traditional music now. There is, yeah. Isn't yeah. there? And young people, like very young, young ones, yeah. And even in our own county here, the, the oh, Mayo in, is really strong. The, the yeah. interest in, in traditional music yeah. uh, from 14, 15, up oh, to 20 yeah. year olds. Is, like is when phenomenal. you go to the Flares and see who the, 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 mm. the competitors. The, the, abil- the ability is it's oh. staggering, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, the times we're in now, as I said, we'll move on now to uh, the, the current, the, the times we're in. You played in this pub, Matt Malloy's, for 30 years. Yes. Yeah, it's one of the first places I got to hear you play, in the corner there with Lean. Yeah. Seven months ago, don't come in tonight, or don't come in tomorrow night, no, or don't come no, in tomorrow night. No, we thought it would be left for a few weeks. For a couple of weeks, no. We're still at it, we're still seven still or eight months later. What are you doing during these times, musically? Or? Nothing, really. Right. There's no place you can go to play anymore. The no, no, no. music is closed down. Like yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. Uh, would it be any? Would you take it out in the house? I might take it out for an art show, but then you don't seem to. No, it's not. After a, ten or fifteen minutes or while playing, it's the same interest, isn't it? No, you, know? no, no. you don't have the buzz from playing no, for people. Yeah. But nobody bouncing tunes off yeah, you or anything like that. Like of to, course, yeah. To yeah, yeah. That, that you've been used to. Yeah. You're used That's to. really used to. Yeah. It's a very social. Music, you need other people to yeah. use it, bounce tunes off and, and, and energies off. Him. Like uh, the, the popularity of the music then, uh, when Matt Malloy opened here 30 years ago, uh, Westport is like there's two things you come to, to do when you come to Westport. You climb Cloak Patrick, that's the first pilgrimage, and the second one is you come into Matt Malloy's to hear mm-hmm. Irish music. Mm-hmm. And people do come to, the, to that. Yeah, they do. They come from all over the world. Here to make my eyes. Mm-hmm. Like we, we, during the summer once we come out here and play mm-hmm. and we mic up and we do a little roll call where everyone is from. And there'd be at least 15 different countries. Every, we play on a Thursday night out here. 15 different countries that people come from. Uh, it's, it's phenomenal, huh? It, it is, it really is. It, they come here, yeah. especially to hear yeah, yeah. traditional music. Yeah. And the fact that they come to this town. You know, like, like the importance of this this pub as a, as a kind of a a tourist attraction oh, yeah. to the area, and yeah. not just Westport, but to, to West Mayo, West Mayo, to Connacht in general. Like it's not, yeah, you have Crow Patrick, but yeah, you have buses of people coming in that leave off their bags and they're here a yeah. couple of hours later, and this is where they stay. Anybody that them. comes to Westport has to come in here yeah, yeah, yeah. to witness it. To witness it, yeah. 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 Phenomenal. Yeah. Amazing. Have you any, if I, because now I'd like to pick on some of maybe stories or something you could regale us with from over the years. You mentioned one very good one about down my part of the country earlier on. And uh, if you have any more kind of, yeah. Oh, I don't know. Uh, really. Or even memories from here. Like, I mean, we'll start off with our characters you'd have met, our, our kind of stories about them. And just off the top of my head, no. I think of. No. Might think again. Yeah, yeah, you know, because you, you, like, you'd have travelled a lot of the country, you'd have actually travelled outside the country a fair bit, I believe, with the, with the, with the, the, the Cayley Band. Well, we did. With the Cayley Band, then we came on, like, uh, and we went to America a few times. Yeah. 
went on a cruise. Yeah. Then we used to go on an Irish festival every year to Spain, or Ibiza, Portugal. This enjoyed travel. We, we used to play for them. And he ran festivals every year up to this year now. It cannot be run this year. Mm -hmm. And that was amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in Spain or France and uh, up to maybe again 2,000 people out by the swimming pool dancing sets. Unbelievable. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Must be phenomenal. Yeah. And not yeah, just Irish people, I take it. Or would there be a lot of them? Would there be a from all over oh. England, England, Ireland and America. Okay. Wow. Yeah. 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 So the Cayley Band then, so you, you went from one band, one type of music to another type yeah, of music. Yeah, well, the Cayley Band came on stream to cater for the set dancers, mm. local ones, when they had got the lessons mm. and they, they started to run it in Art Cayley. And, 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 and the band members, like, was there any crossover of, of artists and musicians from the, the show? Uh, there, would, there would be, yeah, there's completely di different the, musicians. Yeah, for yeah, 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 yeah. The other band was uh, pop and pop of the day, pop music. We used to have uh, rehearsal every Tuesday night, I remember, and we'd see what was in the charts. Wow. And we'd try and get something off from the charts, you know, mm. uh, and ha have one at least to keep, that going. to keep that going. But the traditional thing is a completely different thing, you know. Mm. So you had a different lineup, with the exception of yourself. So there was a different gang of musicians you played? There was, oh yeah. And how did you come across them? Were they just friends? or? Well, they were just friends that we knew and yeah, we were yeah, playing yeah. the odd time together. Yeah. And uh, then at the same time Matt, Matt here, Matt Malloy's had opened up and so there was a lot of musicians coming in. So our band consisted of a fiddle, uh, banjo and accordion and rhythm section then piano and drums. So you know all the There's only a small kid in yeah, 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 yeah. But, but you, the best you, in the world. Yeah. <laughs> but you were well known and well respected. Yeah. And, and you you're a great player, Liam and Porrick. Uh, ah, yeah, we still enjoy the Kaylee. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because uh, the, there were three hours of non-stop playing at a speed. You could, yeah, I know, I, I could imagine. But it was great. You could yeah, play yeah, every, yeah. You could, all your tunes. Yeah, yeah. You could get through the whole lot for yeah, yeah, around yeah. about 150 tunes for the night, yeah, 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 yeah. which was great. Yeah, yeah. Energy. Yeah, Energy yeah, and yeah. The, the great, the atmosphere those yeah, of these course, places was yeah, unbelievable, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's fantastic yeah, to yeah. have that. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. Well, I'd love to get a story or two off you as well, if there's any kind of antidote or any kind of... You might tell us about the time you played, uh, you were telling me earlier on about you played in a dance hall down in, in Ellis in, in, uh, well, that time, like, in the 50s, in the uh, 50s, when we were playing 50s and 60s, uh, there was dancing every night of the week, and uh, every place had a ballroom. They made ballrooms out of different uh, barns and everything. <laughs> and this particular one we were playing in was converted uh, from a barn, a really big barn. And it acted also as a funeral home. He was an undertaker, this man, an all-round man. And um, the stage consisted of bags of oats stacked on top of each other uh, from his farm, he was a farmer, and sheets of plywood on top. Curtain hung at the back of the stage and coffins lined up at the back of that. <laughs> Great combination. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, yeah. So anyways, this night we were playing in it, uh, we were going well, and we could feel the stage sort of moving. What's going on? You know? Bags of oats at the side had burst, and the stage had all gone to one side. And the, the chap on that side, himself and his guitar and amplifier and everything, down on the floor on top of him, and he, he wore a wig, this man. And the wig came off, and he was there, ball, ball, throw on the floor, and he couldn't get up early. And next thing, the curtain was pulled down from the back, some in somewhere. The curtain came down, and the coffin started to come out <laughs> on the floor. And you can imagine that. My God! 
So oh, the women, public must have gone crazy. Women were flying oh, fight, outside, fight. the devil and everything had a beer. <laughs> <laughs> and you couldn't write it like that. Of course, you know, you couldn't write no. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the amount of, like, how many times did things like that happen? Ah, yeah, imagine. so the beer out there, the odd one. The odd one where there'd be something going on. And, yeah. Uh, it was character, yeah. Well, yeah. Thanks a million. Um, there's nothing else off the top of your head that you can think of um, that you'd like to add with a. Uh, about the focus is about you're from Mayo and m maybe how important you think Mayo is or music is to Mayo and vice versa how, uh, the importance of from your travels as well of playing in different bands how did the music from Mayo musicians would have been received um, because cause sometimes like, from my experience sometimes Mayo always kind of got the the poor fourth cousin approach to, to especially traditional music it was always kind of barely mentioned as a place of importance in music mm, it was in, in the early years but like yeah. since we'd say the 80s yeah yeah 90s it's i tell you it, uh, it, it's, it's, got right, it's got recognition it's got right and rightly so because yeah. if you just have a look at the flares yeah and the amount of uh, young musicians mm -hmm. top class musicians yeah, yeah, that's coming yeah, yeah. forward like you know yeah. It's unbelievable. <laughs>